Welcome to Closets Las Vegas, the city's premier custom closet and storage company. We provide complete storage solutions for all price ranges and projects, backed by our 20 years of experience. Whether it's a closet, pantry, garage storage, floor coatings, entertainment center, laundry room, home office, custom bookcases, and window coverings, Closets Las Vegas will give you the look and feel you want in your home. Please contact me, Pat, for your free consultation, and don't forget to ask about 0% financing for 18 months. I look forward to working with you. Attention contractors, remodelers, and homeowners. Is your renovation becoming a pain in the glass? Here at Glass Vegas, we take care of all of your glass needs, from a broken window to custom shower doors, mirrors, winding closures, storefronts, railings, and much more. We can even help you with new or replacement thermally broken windows. We're a full service, woman owned glass company that provides unparalleled workmanship, excellent communication, and great customer service. Glass Vegas, we do glass with class. Is your credit score holding you back from purchasing a home? GC Credit Coaches is a repair company that's made easy. Their goal is to challenge and remove all negative errors that hurt your credit score. On average, GC clients see about 10.2 negative items removed over four months. Start improving your credit score today with a simple two minute online enrollment for a free consultation and a complete credit audit. GC Credit Coaches offers competitive monthly pricing, no contracts, no hidden fees, and the service stops once you are satisfied. GC Credit Coaches removes inquiries, collection, and charge off bankruptcies and repossessions. Don't forget to visit gccreditcoaches.com. Hi Chuck, it's I have been following you and watching your YouTube channel for years. years. I have decided, decided to finally relocate to Las Vegas and want to start a new chapter in my life. I know you're the perfect realtor to help guide me to find my next dream home. I am looking for a modern kitchen, large backyard with a pool and a golf course community. My name is Chuck, it's Cruz Walt with Simply Vegas, a licensed real estate agent out here in Las Vegas, Nevada. I help buyers like this all the time. So if you're looking for a licensed professional, give us a call at 702-319-1092 or visit lvhomeexperts.com. Buying a home starts here. Does your house look like and have you been considering remodeling your home for some time now? Well, if you love real estate like I do and appreciate the attention to detail in the craftsmanship required to build a remodel or a gorgeous home, then I got the perfect company for you. Guys, I highly recommend Design Zone Remodeling. They are a stellar company that would turn your outdated home into your own personal sanctuary. They specialize in bathroom remodels, kitchen remodels, and full house remodels. Design Zone Remodeling has a reputation for excellent workmanship, competitive fees, and being able to offer a wide range of services and deliver the outstanding results to their clients. I use Design Zone Remodeling on my personal properties. Give Design Zone Remodeling a call today at 725-223 0871 or visit their website at designzoneremodeling.com to request a free consultation today. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the LV Home Experts Podcast. So today I have a very special guest and a good friend of mine. You know, sometimes things just happen in life. And, you know, you get bad credit. I know how that is. Bad credit sucks. And if you're trying to buy a home, you can get a car or something like that. Now you can't even get nothing because your credit sucks. You got to play the game. You got to play it to win. You got to know exactly how to play the game. So I got my guest today, Gonzalo, with GC Credit Coaches. Okay. He's going to share us some tips 
and tricks and techniques on how we can actually hurry up and build your credit, right? So that way you can actually get a home. So what's going on, my brother? How are things going? Good, good. How you doing? How am I sounding? Is it coming in clear? Yeah, you are. There you go. Try to put, take that mic a little bit closer. You might have to kind of like tighten that thing up a little bit. Go Sometimes it runs a little bit loose. You know, you can manhandle it. It's all right. Okay, it's not going to break. No, no, no. You got to tighten up there right, right there. Here we go. Can you hear me now? I hope everybody can hear me. Now, there's one thing that I'm going to do though. Okay, right there. You're actually perfect. You're in frame. So, Thank you. I want to talk about this. I think this is a very important. This is not a topic that we haven't even talked about for probably like a couple years. Um, there are some times where I work with clients where... Unfortunately, their credit score is so low that they can't even buy a house. And a lot of people just don't understand the the credit game because when it comes to credit, it's just a game, right? That that's all it is. So let's start off with what what is credit and how does this credit score system work? Like kind of explain that. Definitely the way you put it, game is exactly what you want to call it. Yeah. The funny thing is that there's rules to this game and I don't know about you or myself or anyone but if we paid attention back I think it was ninth grade 10th grade yeah we had a class on credit right mm -hmm. or did we not I didn't nobody <laughs> did I don't think anybody <laughs> did and I wonder why so yeah there's a game that's set up that you must comply with certain things yeah but we don't even know what those rules are what's the rules of engagement so it's simply borrowing power it's what the banks are willing to loan you when it comes to your vehicle when it comes to purchasing a home when it comes to business loans credit cards but yet you're taught for 12 years of general education without a class on credit yeah and so there is a score that says this is who you are as a person and that score dictates whether you keep your word or not but they never taught you in any one of those electives I don't remember being in an elective. I wonder why they don't they don't teach you that. Even today, there there's some parents out there that don't even teach you about credit. Like my parents didn't even teach me about credit. I didn't know about credit until like I was probably the age of 21. And let me give you my first story here. And um, me and a, me and a buddy, we we tried to create a website, and this is kind of funny. It was called Naughty Lens. Right. All right. And this was an online company. And this is a little bit embarrassing. Uh, it's kind of like one of those porn things. Right. And um, I bought a computer, but I used my credit for Radio Shack. And okay. this is like the old school PC. And uh, we bought a camera and all that stuff. But I just used a credit card that I got from Radio Shack. Right. And um, I didn't make no payments. And I was like, I don't care. I'm Free just money. Yeah, free money. I was just young and dumb. And at that time, it was $1,200. And $1,200 was a lot of money back then, right. right? And then when I went to go apply for another card, I got denied. Right. And I was like, dude, why am I getting not denied? And they're like, well, it says here on your credit report where we just pulled that uh, you got a Radio Shack card that you have not been paying for. Mm -hmm. So we are denying you. So I literally started off with bad credit. Right. Now, after that, you know, I started to understand the importance of playing the game. Mm -hmm. So I, I paid them off. And the way that I paid them off was I contacted them and said, hey, look, man, I'm young. I made a mistake. If I just pay you guys right now $800, will you guys wipe this off? Mm -hmm. They're like, you know what? We'll take it off. And they, they took it off. It took a couple months, right, to settle. And after that, Every credit card I got or any type of financing I got, I've never missed a payment from that day forward, okay? And I realized how important the credit system was because when you play the credit game, what that does, it allows me to leverage out and borrow money to go make money. That's right. And there's a lot of people that just destroy their credit. And I think it has to do with the lack of education, mm -hmm. So fast forward to about, you know, I have a stepdaughter. She's about 25 now. And uh, I'm, I'm going to say probably about when she was like 16. I had an American Express card. I educated her on credit. And what I did was I put her on my American Express card. She had an American Express card, but she didn't use it. That's right. So by the time she was like 17, 18, she had a very high credit score. So now when she wants to go finance 
anything. She has the leverage because of her credit score. That's right. So, you know, it, it's passed down from generation to generation. And I think this is should be important on this show where we educate the public on how to play this game. Would you agree? 100%. Okay, so um, there was an article that I had read. The So let's start off with this one here. I'm going to pull this one up. And I think this is a little bit fascinating, okay? And this has to do with uh, credit card debt statistics. And it says here that Americans, right, total credit card debt balance is at $1.31 trillion in the second quarter of 2023. According to the latest consumer debt data from the Federal Reserve Bank of New York, this is actually up since 2000, I'm sorry, 1999. So what this is saying right here, I'm going to see if I can pull this article up for all of us here so that way we can see. So it says it right here that our nation has the credit card debt like unbelievable, $1 trillion. So what does that tell you? That means a lot of Americans, mm -hmm. right, are using their credit cards, okay? Now the other thing I've noticed is look at this. The outstanding credit card balance since 1999 to present. So it looks here. The second quarter of 2008, and this is probably during the 2008 crash, obviously, because what happens is people start to retract. They probably end up use, losing their job. What right. do they do? Right? Credit cards. Use your credit cards. That's right. But you got to play the game. So as you can see, around 2013, the economy started doing really good, mm -hmm. and credit card debt went down. Yep. Then if we take a look, 20, uh, 2020, this is uh, probably like during that pandemic phase, That's right? right? That's right. People didn't go to work. They had to use their credit cards. Now we hit 2021, fourth quarter. It started going down. But look at this. It shoots back up to a trillion dollars. Is that scary for you? What does this tell you? It tells me that I'm going to have a lot of clients. <laughs> a lot of clients, and I want to help these people. Yeah. But to that point there, what happened was everybody got a stimulus check, right? Yeah. As many people in America, as we know the story, a lot of industries did well, yeah. tremendously well. So when you see that dip there, that's everybody making money, not having to use their credit cards. Yeah. But over the last three years, everybody got used to the money they were making, the lifestyle we were living in America for the last three years, mm -hmm. that all of a sudden it's coming to a halt, as we see, with so much going on in the news, almost by design, Yeah. that people are like, I still want to continue on this lifestyle, the dinners, the buying the shoes. No, that know, sounds no like me. To anybody with a shoe <laughs> fetish, like but <laughs> I know you got a big shoe game. <laughs> shoe game sick, but um, that's what's going on. You see that shooting right up simply because the mm -hmm. lifestyle over the last three years, this nation has been blessed through money printing, mm -hmm. right? And so everybody got to check. But it's retracting now when it comes to them pulling back by raising rates and doing what we're starting to see. But people are using those credit cards, and so, like you said, they're losing jobs. A lot of industries aren't making it. A lot of companies are yeah. closing. So, unfortunately, we're starting to see the rise of with that chart there. Talking about that, you know what's crazy is uh, I always go to Caesar's Palace. And uh, when we had that stimulus check, unfortunately, you know, I didn't get none, you know. But um, there would always be a line at Louis Vuitton. <laughs> I swear to God, like That's right. Gucci, Louis Vuitton. That's right. You would literally have a line out the store and people were just buying stuff galore. Yeah. I go there today. There is no line. None. No line. It's None. crazy. None. Well, what, what's the old saying is if we can throw out as much money as we can out there, it'll make it right back into the top. You've heard this before? Mm -hmm. But the problem is that when you do that, right, everything is good today. Right. But you don't feel the pressure later on. And I, I think this is where we're starting to feel the pressure because here's another article where it talks about um, which state – Residents has the most credit card debt. And I think this is a little bit fascinating. So wow. the darker the green, it kind of just shows you, you know, what we're ranked. So Nevada's 13, but I'm going to come down here. Okay. And as you can see, the average credit card debt is like $9,000, right? Drops down. Uh, we're what number? Let's see where we're at. We're number 13 at $7,905. So is that a lot for the average household income? For the state of Nevada? It definitely seems to start looking that way. Yeah. As it starts to rise. 
Uh, I mean, what, that's 10% of your income, your gross. I was going to ask you that. So what's the median out here for the household? It's about $80,000, yeah, for a so ha- average 10%. household income. So it's about 10%, that's right. but that's your gross. That's not what you're netting. That's right. So, so they're way above. If they're making 80, they're netting, what, about 60, maybe 58? Yeah. Somewhere around there. So. And, and the fascinating thing about this is that if we take a look at the household, mm-hmm. okay, across the board, okay, this – this is where it's very intriguing of what's going on. And I'm going to pull up some more statistics here for you. So the uh, total household debt is $17 trillion for the first quarter of 2023. Right. So the average household that has debt. So if we took all our debt and we had to pay our debt. So that means each individual would have to pay $102,000 to pay off our debt. If you only make eighty thousand, but across the nation was like thirty six thousand a year, That's right. bro, you would have to work over three and a half years just to pay off the debt that we currently owe. Right. My point here is, the more money that you print, it's great to stimulate the economy. It's great to stimulate jobs and all that right mm-hmm. now, mm-hmm. but you're gonna be paying for the back end, right? Right. So it really just depends on the administration how much money they print. We don't feel it within their terms, but when the next president comes over. Right. What happens is you're like, yo, this president sucks. Right. But not knowing that that's the lagging indicator from the previous right president. So if we take a look here. Mortgage debt, 12 trillion dollars. The average uh, household mortgage. I'm sorry. The average mortgage debt is two hundred and thirty six thousand. Look at the payment here. Fifteen hundred. Right. OK. People are doing HELOCs at forty one thousand. Now, if we take a look at the monthly car loans, we talked about this right. earlier, $716. Okay, so now you have, right, $1,400. Then we have another $700. That's about $2,100. You make only, what, $6,000 a month take home? Dude, this is really eating up into your payment. Right. This is crazy. Not only that, are you married? Yes. Married okay. happily. Okay, happily. I like how you disclose that. Watching this. Okay, does she drive a car? Yes. Does she have a payment? So I'm paying eight fifty. Okay, just on one car. Her car. On her car. Yes, I bought it for her. For Th- her this day. is my point. What about yours? You uh, making a payment? It's paid off. Okay, so it's paid off. Okay, so yeah. you're not the norm because obviously this is what you do for a living, yeah. right? That's right. You, you're the uh, credit guy. Mm-hmm. The average person probably has two cars. Yeah, of course. And they got kids and all that stuff, right? They go out, food. Look at this. It says right here the uh, average loan, uh, average personal loan debt is $18,000. So imagine if you did have a credit card debt of $18,000. How long would that actually take you to pay off a debt like that, making $6,000 a month? Like, what, what's the average? Like, how long does that take? That's all going to play on how much are they making. Are we talking about the netting 6000 again? Well, I'm talking about in today's uh, marketplace, I think the APR for a mm-hmm. credit card now is about 22 or maybe 27%. 27%. So if you had a debt of $18,000, mm-hmm. it would literally take you the rest of your life to pay this off. 30 to 40 years yeah. on a credit card, just like a mortgage. Mm-hmm. So, which, which is very insane to me, okay? So let, let's start from the beginning, Okay. A credit score determines you as a person, your credibility of paying things back, right? That's right. It's kind of like your DNA, I guess. Okay. How does that credit card or um, how does the credit uh, score actually work? How does that determine? Like, what do you start off with? And like, how does that work from there? So scores are nothing more than just to buy your rate at the end of the day. Okay. In most loans. But when it comes to your buying power, that's going to dictate simply what's on your credit. Yeah. Because like you mentioned, your your daughter, yeah. uh, she has a credit card at such a young age or has that credit. She's, let's say she's at 800 score because she was piggybacking, as they yeah. call it, onto American Express. She goes into dealership. She has no buying power, no history. Mm-hmm. It's cool that she has that FICO score. But yeah. That does not dictate her buying power. So mm-hmm. simply dictates the rate more than anything. Now, that being said... Uh, we did have her buy certain things Mm -hmm. to help her out. So that way you could see the history. But I want to go back. So your credit score, when you're born, what do you start off with? Zero? Zero. 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 So when do you actually establish a credit score? And what does it start off with? 
starts off with zero, but let's just say you're going to apply for your first credit card as they mail you in the mail at 18. Yeah. That'll start giving you something. I mean, it might be a $200 credit card, $300 credit card, but it's all made up of five different things, right? So it's going to be your utilization. Mm -hmm. It's going to be the exact um, late payment history. Okay. Right? So payment history, in other words. Um, Geez, the other three is going to dictate off of, I'm, I'm losing track right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. You caught me just of the other five factors. However, I'll come back to it. Okay. But more than anything, that'll start building your score is that little $200 credit card, right? Okay. So then there you got one of them, which is the type of credit. Thank you. It's going to be th- the, the factors of one of the fives is what type of credit. So it's mixed credit. Okay. So you're going to have your credit cards, auto loan, mortgages, personal loans what have you, those are what start giving you some pieces of credit. So if you start off with a credit card, it might start you off with um, 100 points, maybe 200 points. Some Mm -hmm. people, depending on how they treat it, that little $200 credit card after two, three, four payments, you look like you got an 800 score. Okay, so when we look at credit cards, right, Mm -hmm. a lot of people look at the APR. Right. Explain the APR and how does that actually work? Because they figure, hey, you know what? I'm going to borrow, take out 200 bucks. And next thing you know, it, they have an interest rate. But they're also an APR. Kind of explain the difference between those two. The interest rate and the APR? Uh, yeah. So your annual percentage uh, yearly rate versus what you're going to be paying monthly. Let's say an auto loan. Okay. Right? So let's just say every 30 days it's calculated based off of the amount that's owed. So okay. That'll be your interest rate, but your annual percentage rate is dictated off the course of the loan. Mm-hmm. Same thing with the mortgages, yeah. I believe, right? Mm-hmm. But when people are looking at interest rate, it's more than anything bragging rights. I think it's an emotional game yeah. for the general public. But when it comes to somebody who's an investor, somebody who's um, actually well-versed on money, moving money, it's basically going to say, if I put this money here, I'm paying back this much back. At yeah. the end of the day, through that interest rate. So the lower the interest rate, your typical person goes and brags to their cousin, I got a 2.9 or I got a 0% interest rate. Everybody would love a 0% interest rate on an auto loan, let's say. But that just doesn't happen nowadays. So the question is that why do we no longer have low interest rates? Can you put that mic a little bit closer and talk a little bit louder? Somebody's complaining. There you go. Is it my very white voice? Yeah. Is that better? Yeah, just just talk deep and loud Don't to talk it. A little. I'm gonna pull it up a little higher. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you I mean, won't break it. You're fine. You just probably gotta tighten that handle right there. What we're seeing right now is 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 obviously the interest rates being um, jacked up a little bit higher through the Fed, right? Yeah. Why are they doing that? I would simply say that's what's causing first of all the interest rates from the homes and, and the auto sector. Yeah. But they're doing that probably to recoup all the thousands and hundreds of millions, right? Billions that we gave out. Yeah. They gotta recoup it somewhere. So who pays for it? taxes and your interest rate well the problem is that uh, we print all this money going back again as you print money we create these bonds that's the only way you can print money is Mm -hmm. by creating bonds but then when you sell a bond you have to sell it at certain interest rates because different countries won't buy our bond because if they want to borrow money they want to make some money too as well so they have to uh, increase the bond rate in order to entice the investor or a different country to buy it so now that we have that interest rate now we have an agreement we got to pay it back when three to five years whatever that bond is then what happens is now we are forced to raise, you know, the interest rate. Right. And at the end of the day, we pay for it. So that's the problem. The more money that we print, mm-hmm. it's always going to hurt us in the long run. And that's the point that I've been trying to make across here. So we got to stop printing money. Okay. We got to feel the pain in order to recover. Now. Right. Well, that goes to the statement there was no free lunch. Yeah. When we all took those, those stimuluses in America, mm-hmm. like you said, some of us didn't get it. I mean, that's good. I didn't want it. Um, I was like, no, because I don't, I don't think there's a free lunch. And so now we're paying for it, which we all knew this was going to happen. So this is where we're at. Okay. So going back to the credit score, we start from zero. Mm -hmm. We start building our credit from the age of 16. Okay. Now what's the highest credit score can you actually get? It caps out a 900. It caps out a 900. 900. I've only seen that twice in my life. You know what? It seems like I've never missed a payment Mm -hmm. and I can never get up to 900. And the crazy thing about it is everything is pretty much all under my name. Right. And my wife is just a co-signer on everything, but she's got better credit than I do, okay. which is kind of crazy to me. I, I tend to tell people um, 
again, this is across the board for anyone listening. Yeah. This has nothing to do from my perspective when it comes to genders of any sort. Yeah. What I'm going to say, though, is statistically what I've noticed, yeah. and a lot of people have noticed, is that it seems that women have more credit, better credit scores. I can only think of one thing. Yeah. Because they're the main consumer, let's say, that like to buy things. Mm -hmm. There has to be a rigged game there. Yeah. So it's not, again, due to them. I'm not thinking it's them on purpose. What I'm saying is the game is rigged from the get-go, as we mentioned. Yeah. If their credit's better right out the gate, their borrowing power's better, they're going to get better interest rate. They're more inclined to go use that credit card. They're more inclined to go spend or inclined to tell their husbands, hey, can you buy me this? Yeah. Can you buy me? That's what I think is going on. Now, um, I'm going to tell you a quick story. Uh, when I first met my wife, she had um, bad credit, and um, I had good credit at that time. And uh, she was actually working with a third-party company to fix her credit. Okay. And they were doing, like, payments and all this stuff. And um, we finally made all the payments. And after we made the payments, her credit started going up, mm -hmm. and uh, we were good. But it literally took us a very long time to pay all those debts off because they consolidated the debt. Mm -hmm. But what we had to do was go back, money manage, right? How much money's coming in and how much is going out. And there were some nights, hey, we ain't going out tonight. That's right. You got to pay the price and it's all a game. And it's, it's very simple, but you have to be disciplined. OK, right. not everybody's disciplined. There's times where I talk to consumers that want to purchase a home and we find out their credit is not good. However, we could fix your credit. This what needs to be done. OK, but then people find out it seems like it's too hard. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do it. And look what happens. You don't you don't buy a house. Right. Now, there's times where I have clients. They understand the game plan. They understand how long it's going to take. They understand it's going to be hard. They stick with the game plan. And there's times when I'm closing out a deal where clients come up to me. It's like, dude, it literally took us a year, but we got it done. And I'm very thankful. Right. And I think people want gratification right away. It doesn't happen mm -hmm. like that. Right. So what would you tell somebody if they their, their credit is just horrible and they feel like I can't get a home or I can't get a car? You know, GC credit coaches, what is it that you guys do exactly? We first got to start with the game plan more than anything. Mm -hmm. We assess what's really going on. Yeah. What's the time frame? And a realistic time frame, it's not overnight. So you hear a lot of companies promising people that things are overnight. It's not. We have to think, how long did it take you to get into the position you're at? Yeah. We either got to, if there's within statute, statute of limitations, mm -hmm. we got to get those debts validated by the current collection agency. Now, if they're out of statute of limitations, then simply we have to go look for the wet signatures. We have to start pulling data from all these agencies out there that are trying to collect, that's a process in itself. It's not just sending letters. That's yeah. false. That's the old way of doing it back in 2000. Mm -hmm. And these companies that are out there are starting to do that. We use a different type of Metro 2 compliance. It's simply factual disputing. And what that allows us to do, it's all codes. So we go back into the system from all these major finance companies and the three bureaus. They use an actual system. And that system is all made up of ones and zeros. Okay. There's not a person reading these letters. There's not, um, the system doesn't read the jargon you put on there other than the codes. Yeah. So finance companies, if they're going to report something to your credit bureaus, they have to have this software. It costs money for them per client, per customer to report a trade line. So when it goes into collections, they're no longer the ones servicing that or they're not the ones also paying monthly to update if it's current or discharged or whatnot. It's those collection agencies. Yeah. So they also have the software. So when we send out these disputes, they need to now send us the wet signatures. But guess what? Your chase, when you wrote that off, you were the original one that had the wet signature. Yeah. After that, when you wrote it off and you put it as a charge off, these collection agencies who buy it for pennies on the dollar, they don't have that paperwork. It's mm -hmm. no longer valid because of that one condition. However, if let's just say they have another way of validating it, which would be you acknowledged it, it resets the clock depending on what states. We have to get that information also. So the state of Nevada, how long is that uh, time frame? So you're going to say on consumer debt, it's seven years here. Seven years? Right. So after seven years, does it automatically go off the credit report? So statistically it's supposed to, but it doesn't, right? It falls off after 10 years. 
but we've seen where it just stays on there. Unfortunately, when people even, let's say, settle the debt as you cleaned up your credit, that still stays on there until you go off and, and actually have it removed. Yes. So that's still what we have to do. But statistically, it's I, I remember that because I literally had to call them to have them send over the letter as Paid well. Letter. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, now, the other thing is that the three uh, credit agencies, okay, what are the three credit agencies? Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax. Okay. So what is it that they do exactly? They're nothing more than for-profit company organization. Mm -hmm. It first started in the 1960s where Sir Fair Isaac, they call him. Mm -hmm. um, I almost said Fair Isaac Newton. <laughs> but That'd be cool. <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, Sir Fair Isaac, uh, which is where we get FICO score from, um, the thing is they started back in the 60s where originally in the delis when you went in to go buy a sandwich yeah the guys originally would have a little log and they'd log in hey chuck it's came and bought this this week he's gonna pay us next week well that man lived there in that particular area so then he started to come up with a company hey pay me monthly and i will report publicly that this individual owes this sandwich if he never pays it oh wow so it originally started that way so then he came up of course with experian and they started going up from there. Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax are the other two bureaus. And all they do is just a simple house that takes payment from all these financial institutions that say Chuck it's paid or hasn't paid a particular debt. Okay, so um, let's say if you bought a car, mm -hmm. okay? I've noticed uh, when I went to the dealer, they don't pull all three bureaus. Right. Sometimes they may pull one. Why is that? So let's just say, I think it's for mortgages, it's going to be always your TransUnion or Experian, okay. right? But they also do Equifax. Mm -hmm. So each one pulls differently. There's 10 different model scores. So depending on which uh, lender you're going to go with, of course, they either want to pull Experian and TransUnion. Yeah. Um, there are some like Navy Fed who just pulls TransUnion. If you have your TransUnion locked, then they go to Experian. But Experian seems to be the main central one that all credit cards use, that all... Um, vehicle you asked about vehicles yeah. so they'll pull from that simply because only um experian is going to report tr traditionally everybody but transunion is going to be for either like your um mortgages but also boats yeah um, what do they call them? recreational vehicles mm -hmm. so mainly that ex uh, nobody shows a lot of love to the equifax for some reason um but it seems to be like the third child okay of the three now, I've pulled credit mm -hmm. for all three bureaus. Yep. One thing I've noticed is that the credit scores are all different. It's not the same. Mm -hmm. How is that calculated? Because some of your accounts are not reported on all three bureaus. Okay. And if that's going to be the case, one's going to carry more weight than the other. Mm -hmm. So, again, if let's just say mortgages are counting more on your TransUnion or your Equifax, depending on how, again, each one is broken down, mm -hmm. FICO score is broken down by those five categories. So depending on what type of loan that we're talking about is going to appear more or carry more weight on that particular tr um, trend union Equifax or Experian. Okay. So if somebody's watching this and they actually want to get started to see where the credit score is, and I get this call all the time, mm -hmm. uh, with the credit card, uh, my credit score is 850. Then we do a credit check from a lender like, yo, bro, That's your, right. sh your shit ain't 850, bro. Yeah. We got a problem. And now they get, you know, they get a little bit upset and like, hey. That's not how it works, okay? So if somebody wants to get started to figure out where they are at, okay, how do they get a free credit report other than Credit Karma? So you're due one free credit report. Everybody in America mm -hmm. you can go to Experian.com and pull it. Uh, My FICO, you can pull it from there. Yeah. Um, you're only going to pull one full one from all three bureaus. You could do that as well from each individual site. Yeah. Um, I like that you're talking about credit karma. I get that a lot. Yeah. Every industry tells me that everybody says my credit karma is this FICO. The reason why it's a vantage score, which is just a soft pull, an overview, right? It doesn't mm -hmm. carry any weight. But when you go to pull that through the mortgage company to see if they're well qualified, you're pulling their real estate and their actual hardcore number mm -hmm. is what it really is. What's their buying power in the real estate area? Yeah. So that's the reason that Credit karma is not, not a real thing. And I want to emphasize that because a lot of people think it's a free tool. It's just to give you an idea. Yeah. But I tell people, start there. It's a okay. good place to start. But it's definitely not somewhere you want to walk in a lender and say, I'm an 800 score and I want a million dollar house. It just doesn't. Now explain good. what a soft pull is real quick. 
it's not going to have any impact on your FICO score. Okay. So you just kind of want to see a general overview where you're at. So there is a lot of apps out there that can do that. Every time you go on your banking app or you go to Experian app, they're not doing a hard pull. Every 35 days, it'll refresh. So you get a free pull, but it's not a hard pull. So it's not going to impact your FICO score. And there is certain softwares that allow these companies to pull softly. Okay. So if somebody has bad credit because they haven't been making their payment, obviously the first thing they're going to do is contact you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Walk me through the steps. Well, let me back up. If you guys are actually reaching on out to us to, to get a loan in order to buy a home, we find out that you can't get a loan because, um, you know, your credit score. The next thing we would do is send you guys over to my coach over here. So that way he can coach you through the process. So now they contact you. Mm -hmm. Okay. What's the first thing that you guys do at this point? First, we're going to ask all the questions of what do they know is on their credit? Yeah. Because we're not pulling anything. There's no reason to pull anything other than let's find out first what you know that's on your credit. Yeah. And a lot of people have said they've already been through the credit repair process. A lot of people say exactly what's on their credit. Some people are very savvy, which is great. It's an educated buyer, let's say, in the real estate world. For us, it's an educated credit person who knows what's on there. Mm -hmm. And so then the next step would be like, well, what are you trying to accomplish? What is it you're trying to remove? The reason I need to ask those questions first is because if they have current debt, we need to find out what that really is. Are you still in the middle of a repo? Are you still in the middle of maybe a bankruptcy? Uh, once we've dictate exactly what's going to happen there, then we can actually start a process. But if you're in the middle of a bankruptcy, you got to deal with that first. So those are the, the actual questions, fact finding first, what's on their credit. Then the next step would be like, okay, you have bad credit. These are the areas we're going to start looking at. Then we go ahead and sign up to actually pull their credit, but they do that through a th third party company. We use smart credit. Okay. They do it on their own. They sign up directly with them. It's a vendor that we use trusted vendor, just like LifeLock. Yeah. They have a million dollar insurance in case anything was to happen through the process that we're doing or while you have their service that if there's any fraud, they have a million dollar uh, insurance on it. So once we pull the actual bureaus, then we go over it together. Once they provide me with, with all that information, they show me their credit report. We take a look at everything that's on there, what can be disputed and what you currently owe. Let's say there is an open account that just barely went into collections. We need to actually contact that person. Well, that actual client needs to contact them, mm -hmm. see if they're willing to settle. And most of these collection agencies will settle for 1%. For that now, now, even though that you settle, let's just say, is there anything that I have to look out for? As far as, because what I've noticed is like, you could pay, you know, you can come to an agreement and pay something off, but it's still on your credit. How do you get, get it off your credit? Before you decide to pay it, yeah. you need to let them know and request. They need to give you a paid in full letter. Paid in full letter. They have to provide you with that. Otherwise you're not paying the debt. Okay. And so what they'll do is they'll send you a pre-letter at states if such and such Chuck it's pay, pays this. So you want to get a pre-letter first yes. stating that. Okay. That That's good to know. That they're going to actually provide you that at the time that you pay this. Mm -hmm. So once you make your payment with them and you settle for whatever that amount is, they should send you your paid in full letter. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, at that point, they've broken their agreement. Okay. What happens if you have so much debt, you can't pay everything all off in full? Okay. Can you make monthly payments at a agreed pay, a payment That's or something exactly like that? Like, how, how does that work? So I would definitely, let's touch on what collection agencies are. There's yeah. the, the original lender, Chase. Yeah. Chase sells it off to the first actual collection agency. So that's through the chain of title. Mm -hmm. They actually have the right within statute of limitations to pursue however they like. So they could pursue for the full amount. They could pursue for whatever damages they feel that you owe. So once it goes through that process, you settle with them. Yeah. After that process, if they had no success, they actually sell it off to a broker. The broker then turns it and sells it to a secondary, third party, fourth so it sounds like everybody's down. making money as off it, of this. As it keeps going down. But I want to advise everybody on yeah. this. And I know collection agencies are going to hate me. But after that first initial collection agency couldn't do anything, right? And the debt is out of statute of limitations. First of all, they bought the seven it. Seven years. Right. It depends on your state. Every state yeah, is yeah. different. Texas is four. Everybody's different. What I would do is go uh, statute of limitations for consumer debt in your state. As soon as you check that out, Go back and look at what accounts you have. What happens if you no longer live in that state? That's where it originated. Okay, so it just comes down to where it originates. Where it originated. Okay. So at that point, um, if it's in the second, third phase already, these collection agencies bought it literally for 
$200 million, $300 million, a billion dollars worth of debt for pennies, like literally pennies. I've seen it. And they're going to try to collect on you for five, 10, 15, 20,000. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, but if it's out of statute of limitations, that's illegal. Yeah. And at that point, you get a consumer lawyer. At that point, you, you contact the CFPB. At that point, you can sue this collection. Agency. So why would they buy it then? Uh, make some money, like you just said. Mm. Secondary market. Yeah. So it's the same thing even with our home loans, right? Everybody's, I don't know if I should say this, but it's a real estate show. Yeah. So when you uh, get a loan with a lender, yeah. no longer all of a sudden a year later it goes on to another lender. What mm -hmm. did they do? They sold it on the back end yes. for a couple points, mm -hmm. so on and so on and so on. What's the same thing with debt? There's tons of money made on the back end with these with these brokers and these collection agencies. So I guess it's better to make some money than no money. So that's the reason why they sell that debt and they don't have to, Correct. you know, get the resources to try to go get their money. So they second sell it to a secondary person. Right. He's buying it pennies on the dollar. Now he's entitled to that debt. And at this point, they spend the money and the resources to go and try to collect as much as debt as they can. I want to give an example to show you what kind of money's made. So let's just say I've actually heard and seen the mm -hmm. chain of title myself from a particular broker turn around and sold this bulk. I want to say it was exactly $580 million, $600 million worth of original debt and sold it for five grand. Wow. To a collection agency. The collection agency has that many accounts. There's probably, I don't know, 20,000 accounts in there. So out of one account, if he gets one particular consumer to pay back $4,000, $2,000, they've made their money. The rest is cake. Yeah. And that's where that industry in particular is, is, is it is what it is. Wow. Seems like a pretty Look crazy. Business, yeah. But no. <laughs> <laughs> You're yeah. just constantly like drilling people all day long. Right. Well, that's no way to live. Yeah. You know, it's karma. So now with the consumer, you know exactly what needs to be paid off. Is there like an order of what needs to be paid off? And do you have like some sort of payment plan or something structured to help educate that person on, hey, look, you're spending too much money. This is how the game plan is going to be played. We definitely analyze their entire overview of what they're spending. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go through each account. We're going to go ahead and actually set up an actual system just yeah. tailored for them. What are your expenses monthly? So you're going to go through an expense sheet. It's simply like when they apply for a mortgage, it's the same exact way. And then we're going to look at what are they making monthly payments on their current debt. Yeah. If they're going to set up payments and actually settle for 1% monthly payments mm -hmm. with these collection agencies, at that point, we're able to see exactly what their monthly budget is going to be. So we want to, if they have current credit cards, we want them to start bringing down that debt. That way their FICO score can shoot up. So is that the first thing that you're going to be paying off is the credit card debt? The first thing you're going to want to pay off are these collections if you owe them. Okay, so you're going to do the delinquents on the collections. Then you're probably going to take the highest interest rate on the credit card. Start off with that. Okay. Now, what do you do from there? Do you compound the next a credit card? We do a snowball effect. Okay, how does that the work? The snowball Explain effect that. is find the least credit card that you owe, the lowest amount. Yeah. The snowball effect always works. Okay. You're going to have, sure, you're going to have $20,000, let's say, charged up on one of your credit cards that has a $50,000 limit, which I see it all the time. Yeah. Um, there's a $50,000 credit card, so you're at almost 50% of that uh, utilization. So you're going to have a monthly on there. Sure, it's a high monthly, but what are the chances of you paying down that one if you chunk at it versus paying a $1,000 credit card? So might as well pay off the $1,000 credit card that has a $1,000 limit that that's at 100% utilization. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm not worried about your interest rate at this point, because if you put a thousand towards that 20, what's it going to lower your payment? Maybe a couple bucks when you take that same thousand and pay off. Let's say this you just got rid of that whole interest rate. That's right. Yeah. So then you start snowballing and going and attacking the next one, the next one. So you would take that thousand and whatever that minimum payment would be for that 50,000. You would just double that at start that point. Start making that yeah. minimal payment just while you're actually paying off all these other debts. Okay. That's the most important. So how long does it take to actually get your credit back up to like the 700 or 750 range? Depends what's on there. Are you able to determine that? Yes. Let's just say after the second, third month, we're able to see what has come off. Yeah. That's going to help. But there's no way to determine in the initial phone call by looking at your actual credit simply because some of these companies might not respond to us. The actual three bureaus may not respond to us in a timely manner. So for me to tell somebody, hey, six months, you're, go you're gold. Mm -hmm. There's just no way. I'd be flawed. And, and a lot of these people need to understand that the three bureaus are for profit. Yeah. 
the more jacked up your credit is, the more they get paid. So they're oh, wow. for profit by the central banks. Mm-hmm. Central banks control the bank. Yeah. So if they report Chuck it's has bad credit, you're going to be paying more in interest rate, therefore the economy. It's all a rigged game like we started this podcast. So at this point, for me to tell you you're going to have perfect credit and qualify for a home in a year, I'd be lying to you. Yeah. And that's what these companies are doing, and that's just not how I... So how they, I they don't make, like, uh, simulators or anything like that? Like, once you plug it in, and kind of gives you an so general can, idea, but there's not, like, a guaranteed... Okay, when it comes to credit repair, that's, yeah. that doesn't work. Okay. Those work when you're on a budget analysis saying, this is how we're going to attack our monthly expenses. Yeah. That's perfect. It's a great tool. All our banking apps have it. But for you to simulate that with the credit repair, it does not work. Mm-hmm. And anybody that tells you it works, it's a lie. The three bureaus may not respond to us on purpose for 60 days. Oh, wow. So what good is it? Mm-hmm. So if it tells you on the on the analyzer, hey, you're going to have this great credit, hypothetically, by seven months, eight months, it's still flawed. Mm. So you're expecting and you're telling your lender, hey, in seven months, my credit coach told me that I'm going to have perfect credit. I'm ready to rock. It's just not going to work. Um, so I want to talk about... Um Inquiries. Is it, it's called inquiries. Inquiries, right? correct. Okay. Uh, what is that? And like, how many points does that bump you down every they time say, you pull a they credit say card? Every time you pull, it's going to be two to three points. It on average per. But I've seen five. I've seen six. It, are these big swings? Because I I notice a lot of uh, consumers they don't like to pull their credit. Right. I mean, if you got a credit score of eight, you know, thirty two. Does it that really matter? matter? It shouldn't matter. Look, so why don't we talk about this is a perfect point. So yeah. anything after a 740 score yeah. in the auto sector, you're golden. Oh, that's perfect to know. Take I'm notes, guys. I'm just telling you right now, if you have a 740 score, the auto world, whoever's watching me, I have a lot of friends in that sector. Um, they know I'm for them. They send me a lot of clients, but they know that I know after a 740, all the banks treat you the same. Oh, really? In America, statistically, even when you're qualifying for a mortgage, I mean, I didn't mean to put that out there, but no, in, please in do. All reality, seven forty is treated the same way as an eight hundred. Really, exactly the same. Nothing changes. If you have an eight hundred score, you're, it's just bragging rights. If you have an eight fifty, bragging rights. If you hit the nine hundred, dude, just frame it, put it on, put it on the wall. <laughs> but at the same time, seven forty score, it. you're good when it yeah. comes to prime rate through the qualifying factors. Yeah, from all the lenders from any side, whether again it'd be a home loan, it would be a, an auto loan, it'd be your credit cards. 740 is treated the same. Mm, that's good to know. No offense to my mortgage guys out there. I love you guys, man. Wow. So now I'm going to go buy a car. I'm <laughs> telling you, it makes it makes a world of a difference to be at a 740. Now, is it better to uh, get a loan from a car dealership directly through one of their vendors you're or putting, outside? You're putting me in some tough spots. Yes, Only I am. because I have a lot of viewers and, and <laughs> friends watching this um, that are in the auto world. But I don't think they mind. And I'll tell you why. Because... In this day and age, there's educated buyers. Yeah. And I think the dealerships are appreciating it to an extent. And I think more than anything, the lenders are appreciating it when it comes to an educated buyer. Yeah. That does kind of mess with their commissions. I get it. But it shouldn't necessarily matter if you're putting out good quality um, product or your services bar none the best. Yeah. But when it comes down to buying the actual vehicle, you want to go to your lender. If we're going to educate buyers, you want to go to your credit unions. By nature, before this whole new rate hike, uh, your credit unions had the best rates for anything. Yeah. For home loans and for cars. But for for the matter right now with vehicles, uh, these, let's say Ford or Nissan, Honda, their lenders don't even have good rates right now either Mm because their hands are behind their back. However, they're starting to come out with specials little by little. So it may be in your favor to use the dealerships, the manufacturers financing at this point, because they may have a 2.9. They may have, well, that's that's far-fetched. It would be 2.9, from my understanding, if it's at 48 months right now. Yeah. Some of these manufacturer banks. But in statistics, and, and generally speaking, before any of this chaos that's going on, you want to use your own lender. You definitely want to come in with a credit union and get your, your best interest rate. That's a lot of great information here. So I want to go back now talking about, you know, fixing your credit. You're working with the client. How often do you um, check in with the client? Like how does all that work? Is it through like a system or you're contacting them or? The biggest thing that um, I want to emphasize with everybody listening and anybody in the future that watches this, we're called credit coaches for a reason. Yeah. There's nothing like in this day and age coaching people the right way. Yeah. Stop selling Stop telling and start providing a service. 
I've taken the model that real estate agents have. They have the best follow-up game I've ever seen. Honestly, I'm not going to generalize it in blanket statement, but I'm going to say in this industry, what I've noticed is they tap in. For instance, if, if I'm buying a house, I'm going to text the crap out of my agent. Yeah. It's random hours because I'm in that moment and they respond every single time I've purchased a home, every time I've sold a home. So I've taken a page throughout all my years being involved in real estate since the early 2000s mm -hmm. to actually bring that into my company. Every time somebody DMs, messages the company, anytime somebody's on the, the Instagram, that's me. That's me answering. If they call me through the Instagram, I'm answering. My wife and kids know that if I'm texting or responding, it's for a client. And to me, that's, that's what relationship building is. Because ain't no telling if this client maybe may mess up their credit later in the future. Or it's not even about that. It's simply because they're going to send me more people they, that they trust me. I'm there for them. So I walk with them. I talk with them every day. And I will add this. One of the biggest things that I do is if they're at the dealership and they want me to work the deal, I'm telling you, car salesmen are going to hate me. I will jump on the phone and let's say you're buying a Mercedes right now. I'll, I'll talk to that salesman and have him send me the deal that they're trying to give you. Yeah. I'll work that deal out for my client. Wow. Just like that? I have to. For free? It's fun. Oh, it's fun. Why <laughs> you, you like to negotiate? <laughs> we got a negotiator. It's just simply by by educating my my clients, man. Yeah, yeah. I want to educate. and I want to build such a long relationship base. Before I die, I want to at least have touched a million lives, one way or another. And through the social platforms we have, it should be easy to do. How many clients do you guys have right now that you guys are coaching? Oh my god, coaching would be different. So in the coaching aspect, I want to say maybe a thirty solid coaching. Mm -hmm. coaching is, is these, they're on a different bracket. So they're working with me and texting me personally on my cell phone. So is this a different program? This is where different I'm confused. Program. Okay. Yeah, so I what, what are the programs that you have? So if you just want credit repair, because let's say somebody's qualifying for home. Yeah. Somebody could just sign up zero down. I don't do what other companies charge you a thousand up front plus your monthly. It's just 69 bucks a month. It's simple. 69 bucks a month. And there's no contracts. You're going to pay until it's, you're ready to go. So if it's a month, two months, because you had one ding on your credit and we get it off, it costs you 69 bucks. It's just a simple subscription, just like if you went to the gym. A lot of people are hating that business model just simply because there is a lot of companies out there that don't do it right. Yeah. And what they're doing is stretching people out for 12 months, two years. That's I've noticed good, that. That's not good business, man. That's yeah. not good business. I mean, it's the it's, same can be said about gyms. Yeah. I have a monthly membership at a gym and a lot of people do. How many of us really go every day is what they say. So a lot of people are paying these gyms. Well, that's your fault. Yeah. You know, and it's the, the consumer's fault if they signed up with somebody who stretched them and they see no results within the first 90 days. Mm -hmm. You got to cancel with them. Yeah. It is what it is. No hard feelings. You better cancel. If you ain't seen no results in 90 days, that's your bad. So with us, I want to see results immediately the first round. So within 35, 40 days, I should already see something coming back in the next refresh. So yeah. by 60 days, I need to see something. Otherwise, I'm doing something wrong or my company's doing something wrong. Now, um, that coaching program that you have, what, what does something like that cost right now? So I have an elite program. Um, it's going to vary. Yeah. So it's going to vary just simply because with me. Like how fucked up your credit is? <laughs> well, it's not even about that. You know what? At that point, it's free credit re repair at that yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. But what we're going to do is coach you on how to go buy the car on how to get a home loan, yeah. on how to get credit cards, how to get a business loan, how to structure a business. Like we're talking about the class they should have taught us in high school or even given it as a, as an actual major or, you know, get a degree in, mm -hmm. but we're going to coach you up. So you never ever have to go through this again. I'm sure you heard of this in multiple times before in the past a rapid rescore. Okay. How does that work? And does that actually really work? Anything that says fast, rapid, overnight, 24 hours, I don't believe in that. I thought lenders could actually do that where they pay off certain things and get the letter and uh, they like refresh it or something like that. And how are they going to refresh it? I mean, I, days, I, I, right? I, I don't know. So explain that to me. So I've never necessarily done it myself. Yeah. Okay. But every time somebody's done it and they come to me, I've never seen a change. Oh, really? I didn't see a change. So how are some of these reports. lenders able to get these loans done after these clients end up paying whatever needs to be paid off to get their credit up in order to get the, the financing? 
again, are they sending that paid in full letter from the actual collection agency? That that's probably what it could be, and they're using and that paid in full letter when it goes to underwriting, showing hey, it's been paid and settled in full. So so that would be the internal process. Yeah. But to get a rapid rescore through the actual FICO system mm -hmm. through the three bureaus, that ain't gonna work then. But to your point, that's a whole nother subject. If they're gonna rapid rescore with the actual lender and the underwriter says, oh, they did pay it, they do qualify because it shows here. Yeah. Then they go off of metrics that they believe, okay, once they pay this, their DTI is different now. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's the rapid rescore we're talking about. Mm -hmm. All those factors come into play, right? Yeah. So if they lower their DTI because they pay these debts, now they no longer owe it, the actual underwriter dictates at the end if they're going to qualify. Now, um, you are a lender too as well, right? Mm -mm. I thought you was a lender. Man, it'd be nice. Oh, I thought you was in the lending game. No, I've, <laughs> been, like the, you I've are. been in the lending game. Oh, you've been in the lending game. I've been game. in the lending game. I've been in the, okay, so I've been in the real estate sector, uh -huh. uh, mortgage sector, and the auto world sector. Oh, got it. Um, collection sector, I know it very well like the back of my hand. So mm -hmm. all four sectors has allowed me to actually coach up and give the game. The that's true dope. game. And that's what sets me different. Yeah. I can, with any loan officer, I can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with any loan officer. I can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with your finance guy at the dealership. I mean, you're a pretty big dude, so. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't mean physically, guys. Yeah. I don't I don't want that to come out there. I mean, uh, you look like an MMA fighter yourself. Uh, right? so it's, yeah, exactly. I've looks. Seen you, your transition, dude, from tw 2018 mm -hmm. to now, brother, you, you're, I honestly look like you're a UFC fighter. Out oh, here. thank you. I appreciate it. But About a buck 70? Yeah, bucks, uh, 63. 63. I'm close. I think you, uh, you, you man, you, great, great transition. Well, I'm getting Absolutely. older now, man. I got to watch my health. If you know what I'm asking, do you put your age out there? Yeah, I don't give a shit. How old are you? 43. We're the same age, man. I turned oh, really? 43 in July. When did you turn 43? Uh, November. I'm about to turn 44. You're my elder, man. I got to respect oh, you. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm your big brother. <laughs> your big bro. I'm, I'm your big, small brother. <laughs> but, but, I mean, that's the only reason, guys, that I have yeah. enough um, knowledge when it comes to the lending side, real mm -hmm. estate side. Anytime I buy a house, personally, the, the realtors love me. I have everything in order, everything in line. When yeah. I got to go get qualified, I have everything in order. That's what I want to teach people. It's about leveling up. But nothing in your credit will change until you personally change, which is goes back to my coaching. My coaching doesn't necessarily talk about credit. Yeah. My coaching has everything to do with how you look at yourself in the mirror. Because let's just get down to this. The only reason I still do this is simply because I know there's men out there. When they take their wives out to eat, their friends out to eat, their coworkers out to eat, they see somebody drop that platinum Amex and they still have cash in their pocket, a wad of cash. Listen, people look at you like, well, are you drug dealing? Like people look at you, make you feel less. But at the same time, you look at the dude with the platinum card or your boy shopping. You want that. Yeah. I don't care who the guy is, man. He could be. I've seen pretty well off people. Yeah. with The worst scores with the worst really? credit, brother. And let me tell you, they regret not building their credit because their buying power when it comes to leveraging. No sucks. leverage. No leverage. And that's at the end of the day what I teach. Do you not want to leverage the bank? Do you want, not want to leverage to get this car? Why are you buying a car cash? Now, unless it's an exotic, hey, man, there's a market for that. You could flip it and do what you got to yeah. do. But generally speaking, for the average consumer, I teach them how they look at themselves in the mirror, their fitness goals, how they eat, literally their lifestyle, their budget. How does your wife look at you? How do your kids look at you? Internally, when they're over leveraged on their credit cards, I know they have a hard time waking up in the morning because they know that that paycheck is going straight back to the to the banks. And the guys that work at those banks, those million billion dollar corporations, they're eating it. They're, they're loving life. They want the nation to keep spending, brother. Now, is there uh, anything that I probably missed that we probably need to cover that's important? Because we could talk about this all day long and. An hour went by pretty fast, believe it or not. I think I want everybody. What are we going to a break? No, uh, the show's done. Oh, <laughs> I, I'm going on a listing appointment right after this. Are that's, you? Yeah, that's where I'm going. Listen, I <laughs> I'd rather do this. I, I, we can cover so many topics. Yeah, everybody can go to GC the Coach on Instagram. Okay. DM me all your questions. I don't care what it is. Mm -hmm. Ask me whatever it is when it comes to financing a home, a car getting a business loan, literally anything, even leveling up your life as a man. And I will answer you. Directly. Just like that. I will directly. give you the answers directly, man. We'll jump on a call and we'll negotiate the lifestyle you need with yourself and how to remove all the stuff out of your life, man. 
Is that just it? Hit me up. Hit you up. Just hit me up, man. At GC the Coach. That's right. On hey Instagram. guys, thank you so much for tuning into the channel. Until next time at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Also comment below as well. Let us know if you guys like more content like this. Also check out the second channel too as well if you guys just love real estate, Las Vegas, and the lifestyle of a real estate agent. Also in the link in the description, we have all our coaching programs as well. Other than that, until next time. Peace. See you guys later, man.